Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for being here. I do want to begin by acknowledging that uh, we are, uh, this event is taking place on the unceded ancestral territories of the Anishinaabe Algonquin people. Mr. Blair, Minister Blair will provide an overview of the current situation with respect to the fire, wildfires, but let me start by saying uh, the wildfire season certainly has been record breaking and I spoke a couple weeks ago about the forecast that uh, Natural Resources Canada and Environment Canada had developed and certainly it was a sobering forecast in terms of the conditions that we expect to see continuing throughout the summer. We have seen communities that have been evacuated, homes and businesses destroyed and vast areas burned and we have certainly undertaken action to try to ensure that Canada is as prepared as possible for, uh, for what is happening this year and what we expect will continue to happen in years to come. We have been training a thousand new for, uh, firefighters. I announced uh, 300 Indigenous firefighters and 125 fire guardians through pilots that we have undertaken just last month. We are also supporting provinces and territories to get the equipment that they are going to need. Ces équipements comprennent des éléments tels que les tuyaux, l'avionique, les équipements de communication avancée et d'autres encore. But climate change, as we all know, is a global issue. Its impact requires a global response. Countries are increasingly working together with each other when they are faced with extreme weather events. Certainly, Canada has participated when needed. We, for example, sent 160 Canadian personnel to Australia during the 2019-2020 period. And certainly for decades, Canada and the United States have both received and deployed firefighting support to one another most years. La réciprocité internationale signifie s'entraider en cas de besoin. That is why I am certainly pleased to have met with Ambassador Cohen this morning to sign a memorandum of understanding between Canada and the United States. Nous sommes des alliés, des partenaires, des voisins. Nous nous soutenons mutuellement lorsque c'est nécessaire. This MOU will increase the ease of cross-border support and modernize many existing agreements. It makes our support, our reciprocal support more efficient. It will enhance our ability to fight wildland fires. It sets out procedures for the exchange of these resources. It establishes a framework that encourages mutual assistance and cooperation. In the past, the wild, uh, wildland fire resources sharing between our two countries was pretty much ad hoc. It relied on a number of different arrangements and they were only focused on fire suppression. This MOU will allow better coordination uh, with our partners at the province and territories to ensure adequate firefighting resources. This will include not just suppression, but also work in prevention, in monitoring, in research, in risk mitigation, and other technical areas. Already this season, we have seen very significant support from our American friends, and we are very grateful for the support that has been provided. Over 900 American firefighters, incident managers, and support staff have been deployed in Canada to date and more will be on their way if we need them. The U.S. is also providing technological support. Their fire guard program will help identify fires early, help authorities to stop them before they get out of control. Ce protocole d'accord est un pas en avant pour rendre cette relation réciproque plus efficace. I certainly want to thank the ambassador and the government of the United States, our American partners, for their support. And let me turn to, uh, to Ambassador Cohen maybe to say a few words on behalf of the United States. So th thanks very much, um, Minister Wilkinson. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm extremely pleased to be here for what is as close to an all good news announcement as we get to make. Um, but I, I do want to start um, by expressing my sympathy and saying that my heart goes out to the many people who have been displaced by, um, by these wildland fires and the property destruction that has already occurred. It is a, it is a real reminder um, that, that taking on wildland fires is something that is particularly well suited for a binational approach because wildland fires do not respect borders. Um, it, the wildland fire doesn't know when they're about to cross the Canadian border into the United States. And certainly the smoke in the atmosphere um, is not respecting our geographic boundaries. So I'm very proud of the relationship that's existed for many years 
between Canada and the United States um, in terms of dealing with wildland fires. Um, I, I hear in the wake of our smoke and the substantial effort that's being exerted, I hear, um, I hear from some Americans, a very small minority, people who do not understand the way this relationship works. I hear questions about um, whether our substantial effort is merited and deserved. And I always start with something which people don't realize, which is when the United States needed Canada with our out of control wildland fires in 2020 in the northwestern United States, Canada was there for us. Um, and so this is the nature of our reciprocal relationship. Um, the, the minister talked about this, um, this, this um, arrangement that we signed this morning. Um, it, it codifies the way in which we've been working together. But as the minister said, more on an ad hoc basis, this organizes it. it sets forth the multiple ways in which we can work together in dealing with the scourge of wildland fires and its suppression so that when they occur, we, we supply not only people resources but equipment to help the other country to deal with that problem. Um, by the way, Minister, an update if I can. And there, one of the reasons why this arrangement will help is the, some of the confusion around even the United States figuring out what we've been supplying. So the current numbers as of the last day or two is that the United States, since the inception of this um, firefighting season, have deployed more than 1,500 United States firefighters to Canada. Um, about 1,100 of those are federal firefighters. The balance are firefighters from states and other jurisdictions that um, also are involved in combating fire. We've also supplied a massive amount of equipment, um, including our the lar those large firefighting planes, because taking on widespread um, fire wildland fires really requires not only personnel, but equipment and technology. And then the third component, which is so important in this arrangement, is the technology commitment to share technology and to work together on technology to try and control and prevent firefighters going forward. So this is the, this is the kind of thing that the United States and Canada do together. As President Biden said when he was in Canada, um, March 23rd and 24th, um, we will always have your back and this is a space where both of our countries have committed and have demonstrated that we will always have each other's backs. And the arrangement we executed today put some form and structure around that, and it will advance the health and the welfare of Canadians um, and Americans going forward. So thanks for coming here, and it's my pleasure to turn the podium over um, to another friend of mine, beyond Minister Wilkinson, Minister Blair. Thank you very much, Ambassador Cohn. Good afternoon, everyone. Bon appétit, tout le monde. Um, I'd like to begin my remarks by saying thank you to Ambassador Cohn and to our, our friends, our allies, our neighbors in the United States. We have seen on so many occasions that good neighbors and good friends have your back when you need them. And the United States has proved yet once again what good neighbors and good friends they are to Canada. This, the MOU being signed today is an important agreement for Canada and the United States. And as the ambassadors outlined, it allows us to continue a partnership that serves both our country well in times of need. But it also provides, I think, better organization. We've had a number of conversations with, for example, the FEMA administrator in the United States, with the Secretary of Homeland Security, and between the President and the Prime Minister about how we can work more efficiently together. We know that many of our provinces and territories also have reciprocal relationships and compacts. Uh, with, with, with state governments and with authorities that they, they deal with. And in every case, that, that reciprocal support that is so necessary in, in times of emergency um, has always proven itself to be more effective, but it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we do that in the most efficient way possible in order to serve the interests of both of our nations and our citizens. 
To the American firefighters who have already been deployed this season, and as the ambassador has indicated, nearly 1,500 people, which is a remarkable response, and as well to those from Australia, Chile, Costa Rica, France, Mexico, New Zealand, Portugal, South Africa, and Spain, I want to say thanks. You have our gratitude uh, for the quick response. And you know, I think when we're dealing with the global challenge of climate change and, its, and the way it manifests itself in this country with floods and wildfires, we are so grateful that in, in our international relationships, our friends and allies have been there for us. As of today, there are 416 wildfires burning across Canada, and 213 of those <clears throat> are currently determined to be out of control. So far, over 6 million hectares have burned in Canada this year. There are currently 1,800 international personnel on the ground as of yesterday, and we anticipate further deployments will continue. Um, in the coming weeks because, as Minister Wilkinson has said, um, our forecast for the coming fire season remains sobering and in many areas of the, of the country. And although the weather has been helpful in many jurisdictions, it remains a challenge and we remain concerned that the risk, the fire risk in Canada remains high or even extreme in many parts. In Nova Scotia, I had the opportunity this week to travel to Nova Scotia with the Prime Minister um, to visit a few of the areas that have been impacted by their wildfires. We had the opportunity to thank firefighters and first responders who worked tirelessly to keep Nova Scotians safe. And we also had the opportunity to meet with some of the people who have been impacted by these fires who've lost their homes and to provide them with reassurances that all orders of government will work with them and for them to make sure that they, they, they are able to recover and, and to re return to their communities and their lives as quickly as possible. Yesterday, we approved an extension of the Canadian Armed Forces deployment in Quebec, and we remain in close contact with the province as they assess their needs. Um, I, I would comment that, the, the, that all of the provinces and territories, and certainly in Quebec, are doing an excellent job, and we're working very closely with them um, in responding to the resources that they have asked for in order to make sure that we keep Canadians safe in Quebec. We are also closely monitoring an, an emerging situation in Northern Ontario, particularly with the evacuations currently underway in Fort Albany, First Nation, and Kisechewan First Nation. Mr. Haidu and her officials have been in constant contact with community leadership there, and this afternoon, I can advise you that we received a request for federal assistance from the Government of Ontario. We're working to identify the federal resources that can be mobilized quickly to support those communities, and we understand that a number of people have already been evacuated from the Fort Albany First Nation, and there is now a request to, to assist in evacuations from Kasechewan. And so Indigenous Services Canada and our provincial partners are working very closely together, um, we, and the Canadian Armed Forces has already mobilized in those communities to provide assistance, and further work is being done through our Government Operations Centre to respond to the request for assistance that we re received today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind all Canadians that while the situation has stabilized in some regions, the fire risk in many parts of the country remains very high or extreme. I would urge Canadians to pay attention to your local authorities and follow all fire bans, travel restrictions, and other safety warnings. Air quality warnings also continue to be in effect in various communities. As Minister Duclos and Dr. Tam reiterated on Monday, no amount of fire smoke is safe, so please follow the advice of your local health authorities if you live in a community being affected by wildfire smoke. Thank you all, and now we'll be happy to take any questions that you may have. For uh, any of the ministers or um, Ambassador Cohen, what would you say is the most crucial uh, part of this agreement for you know, smoothing out that um, assistance process? Is it going to be the visa? Is it the visa? Is it making sure there's you know similar rules nationally instead of sort of the ad hoc agreements with the provinces and neighboring states? Um, what would be the most the biggest efficiency coming out of this? Probably all probably all have our favorite provisions of the agreement. Um, I think the most important element of the agreement is the codification of all of the agencies in the United States and in Canada that are engaged in these efforts and identifying them and, and, and expressing the commitment of collaboration and working together. Um, the, there, there is a will here to help. That has never been the issue. But sometimes getting it organized in a time of crisis takes more time than we would like. And so this provides a structure and a commitment by both governments and multiple agencies within both governments that we will work together, we will respond. Um, that, you know, that I say this, 
I've heard about issues with visas. They, they, that has not, that's not an impediment. It has not been a meaningful impediment. Remember, you don't need, an American doesn't need a visa to go to Canada, Canadian doesn't need a visa to go to the United States. And when you've got the, the um, odd firefighter who may not be a Canadian, who may not be a US citizen or may not be a Canadian citizen, but is part of a firefighting force, in these times of emergencies, our governments have done great. They make the exceptions, they pass it. That hasn't been a meaningful impediment, but what has been missing is this type of an overall frame that expresses the commitment of the government to have all of the multiple agencies who are involved in wildland firefighting cooperate, work together, and coordinate their efforts when either country needs it. This is not just the United States to Canada agreement, this is a Canada to the United States agreement as well. So that's my that's my answer as to the importance of the, um, of the arrangement. Maybe I would just add to that. I agree with everything the ambassador said with respect to the overarching frame. I think it's also important to note that uh, in the past, we've been very much reactive in terms of the work that we have done uh, with our friends in the United States. It's all been about suppression. And this agreement actually is much broader and looks forward to a future where we do expect to be seeing forest fire activities of significant size in many years to come. And so a focus on prevention and what are we doing in Canada, what is going on in the United States, how can we share best practices, how can we leverage technology to enable us to be more effective, including things like Canada now having access to, uh, to U.S. satellite data to be able to actually have better information with which to, to operate. So I think there are a number of areas that where the expansion is going to be very helpful for both of us. Pour vous, M. Wilkinson, si je peux, c'est une des raisons d'avoir un protocole pour faciliter le transfert, c'est de le faire plus rapidement. Avec un protocole comme ça, combien de temps on va sauver et comment on va sauver ce temps-là? C'est difficile de dire, les circonstances changent, mais, mais bien sûr, on, on, on peut répondre plus vite et ça c'est très important dans, quand on doit combattre les feux de forêt. Mais comme j'ai déjà dit, um, C'est important que nous, nous avons une, uh, une focus sur les autres enjeux comme la prévention, pas sur, seulement le combattre sur les, 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 les feux de forêt. Un suivi, juste si je peux me permettre aussi. Est-ce qu'il y a une obligation d'agir? Parce que si, on, si nous, on a plein de feux de forêt, on a de la misère à fournir de notre côté, est-ce qu'il y a une obligation de répondre à une demande de l'autre partie? Il y a une obligation de considérer, mais bien sûr, euh, s'il si y a les circonstances dans, dans les deux pays où les ressources, euh, chaque euh, pays doit avoir besoin de, de, des ressources, euh, bien sûr, euh, on ne peut pas forcer, mais bien sûr, c'est euh, quelque chose qui, euh, qui met en place euh, un protocole pour assurer que nous euh, nous considérons et, et bien sûr, si on peut, on, on veut. Ambassador Cohen, yeah, Ambassador Cohen, Canada doesn't have a nas single national disaster risk agency like you have in the United States under FEMA. There's talks underway to maybe develop something like that. Would it make it easier to have this kind of agreement and resource sharing if there was a single agency to handle that rather than 10 provinces and the federal government all at the same time? So as you recognize, by the way, you addressed that question. I'm the United States ambassador to Canada. I don't run Canadian government. And I've had multiple conversations with Minister Blair He's right on this issue. He's talking about this issue. And, and frankly, what, part of what we're doing in this agreement is to create a bit of an synthetic to give Canada the benefit and advantage of, of being able to function with a coordination within its government as a result of the arrangement as if there was a FEMA in Canada. So, uh, no, I, well, I, I, it's not my place to say that. I think FEMA works very well. I've heard Minister Blair on multiple arrangements in multiple contexts praise the performance of, um, of FEMA, but it's not my place to say how Canada should prioritize its resources or organize its efforts. Um, it's my place to try and be responsive to and participate in conversations to create, the, to create a more seamless and a more effective, unified response to natural disasters between Canada and the United States. And that's what I've been able to do working with Minister Wilkinson in the wildland fire aspect and with Minister Blair in multiple contexts. So um, I think I'll stop there.
Ambassador, if I, may, if I may jump in, you know, first of all, we live in a cooperative confederation in Canada. The provinces and municipalities have responsibilities here. They, they have the, their, their own firefighter services. They have access to firefighting equipment and, and airplanes. Uh, the volunteer fire departments are located and, and administered within those provincial and municipal jurisdictions. And at the same time, the federal government understands it has a very significant responsibility in order to provide a level of coordination and when it's required support. Um, and so our government made a decision two years ago. I was previously the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness, and that role was bifurcated very purposely um, it, within the federal government to create a greater focus and concentration on dealing with not only emergencies, but emergency prepar preparation, response, and management. Um, and, and so that's the work that we have been undertaking. There are a number of significant um, in efforts now underway. We also are responsible for coordinating and convening right across the government of Canada. Because, for example, there are many significant responsibilities for the Minister of Natural Resources um, with respect to, to forestry management and wildfires. We also have close coordination with Indigenous Services Canada, but, but my responsibility is to create structures within the government and within the public service in order to pr provide much greater coordination. And in that endeavor, we are learning a great deal from our collaboration with, with our American colleagues. You know, we see what works well for them. And so when, as we're building out a new way for the government of Canada to manage emergencies, we are also recognizing the importance of doing it in a way that connects in a, in a very real and tangible way with our, our international partners, our provincial and territorial partners, and even local um, responses to, to wildfire. And of course, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out the, the significant challenge uh, we face in remote and indigenous communities. And so Indigenous Service Canada, through their emergency management, is also a very important part of the federal government's responsibility. And so bringing some collaboration, coordination, and, and seamless integration into all of those services, we have a responsibility to protect Canadians from these types of emergencies. We've seen, and I think everyone would acknowledge, they are increasing in both frequency and severity as a direct result of climate change, and it requires that we adjust and, and, and change the way in which we respond in order to support Canadians, not only in time of emergency, but to help those communities through various investments in disaster mitigation, adaptation and mitigation in, in, in their critical infrastructure and in their communities, and that we be, be there not only in the emergency, but to help people recover. There is one national organization that could coordinate all these things that you talked about? Well, the, the, there is. Uh, th that is one of my responsibilities, is to bring that coordination. And we're working through the development, actually we're building up more of our government operations center their relationship with the provincial emergency operations centers is critically important. Then they reach out also to municipal regional governments as well and for First Nations. We also are, are also working very closely with other ministries and for example, there is a, a, the Canadian Integrated or Interagency Force Fire Center, which is, which is administered by NRCAN and by the provinces and territories and it's a mechanism that has been, been put in place to coordinate the movement of personnel, equipment and water bombers right across the country and internationally. And so we're looking at ways in which we can bring a greater level of, of coordination and resources where required to make sure that we have enough firefighters, enough equipment, and we have strong relationships with our international partners to get people and equipment and water bombers where, where we need them, when we need them, so that we can help those communities deal with, with some of the challenges that are arisen. Say that, note that it's the second worst season since uh, in 40 years in terms of acres of forest that were burned so far. We're, Do you think we're, we're now in the neighborhood of about 6 million hectares mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the worst you know, on record, I hope not. I, I, frankly, I'm not looking to break any records. But the, the worst wild, wildfire season was in 1989. We also had two very challenging years in the 90s. Um, unfortunately, the fire season this year started earlier and has been more widespread across the country um, then in, in recent memory, certainly this is the largest amount of fire um, that we've experienced in the country in the 21st century, um, but, and, and we're, we're not through the fire season. And so there's a lot of work to be done. Um, it, it's, it's, it, frankly, it's not an, a, a, a record um, that we hope to approach, but we'll, we'll deal with the fires. I would also point out, though, that in, in, because of the great efforts of, of our firefighters, our provincial and territorial partners, Indigenous Services Canada, everybody right across this country, um, notwithstanding, there's been vast areas of forest burned. It has not um, taken a, a life. We've lost some houses, we've lost some community, we've lost some critical infrastructure. We can rebuild that. But, but there has been some extraordinary work done in order to deal with the fires that have taken place. Um, all, of, all of us are working full out to make sure that, that we manage these fires in as efficient way as possible to get the country through this, this season and to keep people safe. And at the same time, I think there'll be lessons that will be learned through this 
on how th those forests can be perhaps better managed or for how we can respond even more quickly and, and effectively for the firefighters. Just on the matter of the uh, classified document leaks of foreign interference, uh, our own National Security Advisor recently said that Canada has uh, lost its credibility with its Five Eyes allies. Is she correct? Um, I don't recall her saying it in that way, but um, I don't. I would not agree with that statement. I think uh, I, she said our credibility with our Five Eyes allies has been put at risk. That was her exact quote. That, it was slightly less than what you said originally. Um, look, I mean, classified. The, the information contained in classified documents is extremely important. Um, I will tell you, I can't speak for every Five Eyes country, but I can speak for the United States in definitively saying um, that our intelligence relationship with Canada remain, remains strong. We continue to have our co confidence in Canada's ability to participate in Five Eyes and, and to protect classified information that is shared across Five Eyes partners. There, there is an inevitability in this world of um, leaks of information, whether they're classified or not. And if um, we as a country um, or you as a human being, forget about classification, would throw away a friendship or a relationship every time something was disclosed that um, was not intended to be disclosed, we would all be acting alone in the world. So there's a it remains a very high level of confidence in Canada as an intelligence partner and the U.S.-Canada relationship, and I believe the Canada Five Eyes relationship remains strong and enduring. Is there any hope that this agreement will reduce um, Canada's need to call on uh, CAF for assistance when dealing with wildfires? The Canadian Armed Forces, every time I ask them to, to step up, they've been there. And, and one of the important mandates of the Canadian Armed Forces is to provide support to Canadians when the, when, for these domestic call-outs when required. And at the same time, we also recognize that those call-outs have had a pretty significant impact on their ability to, to recruit, retain, and train their personnel and, and to maintain their capacity to respond to all the international obligations that we, we, we place upon them. And, and so we are always looking for ways in which we can, what's the most efficient way to respond uh, to these requests for additional assistance from the province? In some cases, it is by necessity. The Canadian Armed Forces, and, and I will tell you that I reached out to the Minister of Defence this, this, this afternoon when we received a request for assistance from the province of, of Ontario because in order to support those communities, we need, we're going to need um, strategic airlift capacity, and in Canada, that's with the Canadian Armed Forces. And at the same time, we, we know that there, there's also work that we can do to find alternative ways in, in order to support. We've developed a humanitarian workforce working with a number of different agencies across Canada, the, the Canadian Red Cross, Salvation Army, um, Search and Rescue uh, Volunteers of Canada. A number of important organizations are alternative ways to respond, but when we need the Canadian Armed Forces, they're always there for Canadians. Cur currently, I'm advised that there are as many as 750 Canadian Armed Forces members were deployed in Quebec. The actual number today, as of, as of today, um, is, is changing because we've also seen a significant arrival of additional firefighter resources um, in that province internationally. And, and so I don't have the, the number available today. But, but, but again, when Quebec asked, the Canadian Armed Forces stepped up and they were there, and as they always are, and, and are responding. And, but we'll also work hard to make sure that we don't overuse those, those very precious assets if they're required somewhere else, and we find alternatives as quickly as possible. Ambassador Cohen, uh, have any members of Congress reached out to you directly to discuss the wildfires or to get this um, MOU through the finish line? And if so, who? So um, I've heard from multiple members of Congress about the um, wildland fire situation in Canada. Um, all of those inquiries were um, seeking information. None of them were accusatory. Um, and based on very short conversations, there was no unhappiness um, at all about the level of support that the United States was providing. Um, and several of the members who reached out to me remembered on their own, even before I reminded them the support that Canada has provided to the United States historically. Um, th I think this, the specific arrangement that we executed today has not been the subject of those discussions. Um, I, I think it's not well known that this was being worked on. 
um, when I report it, because it's something that Minister Wilkinson and I have talked about for many months. When I reported that something was in process to improve the level of coordination and to codify the more ad hoc processes that were happening, the uniform reaction to that was good. That sounds like a really good idea. So there's this in the United States, in, the, in Congress, the legislative level, I think there is, there's an understanding um, about the impact of climate change in creating um, wildland fires and the need for us to work together um, on a continental basis to be able to control them when they happen. And as Minister Wilkinson has said so articulately, to try and turn our attention to the use of technology in actually preventing wildland fires going forward. And that is a very attractive argument for people in Congress who are thinking about these issues and how to deal with them. Last question. Off topic, but what's going on with the Atlantic Loop? Earlier this year, I believe you said that an agreement in principle was going to be reached in, in short order, or at least that was your expectation. Can you give an update? Yeah, I think I said I, I hoped to, to see it uh, <clears throat> progress. Um, I continue to, to, see, to hope to see it progress uh, further. We have continue to have lots of conversations with the Atlantic provinces. Um, the federal government has, has made an offer in terms of uh, financial assistance that we would be willing to provide in the context of the loop. I think that some of the provinces are still digesting that and, uh, and those negotiations will be ongoing. But certainly my hope is that within the next couple of months that we will come to a decision with respect to the loop. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Good to see you.